Assalamu alaikum, manam. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam, Fazan. I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for taking time out. I, uh, you were on my mind since I started this thingy that is going on, and uh, I, I'm just so inspired with the way you you carry out your work. Um, not only the quality of the work that you do, but also the way you present it. That's that's really amazing. So. Just thank a fan. you so much. <laughs> no, no, thank you so much. Matters a lot. And I'm, why? Uh, what I really want to ask you from, let's first talk about you. Uh, so I know that you graduated from LUMS, and as far as I remember, you studied economics, right? Yes, I did a bachelor's in economics, and then I did a master's in econometrics. Master's in, how is that different? Econometrics is more like the statistical and applied side of economics, if that makes sense. And that was in Texas and then? Yes, Texas and Oh, that's why you keep on drawing those graphs of COVID and everything, right? Yes, that's right. Ah, that's cool. So you're now working in Pakistan in some government organization, if I'm not wrong? I am working for the government of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Okay. And I work as a consultant with the finance minister. But these days, briefly, I'm also working on Corona because the finance minister is also the health minister. So I'm working on the random testing strategy for the whole province. And then, yeah, it's, and then <laughs> it's kind of messy because we're also working on the revenue side, the budget, and then focusing on Corona. So yeah. <laughs> a lot of work. No, that, that looks very, very hard work but at the same time it's it's kind of the work that you really want to do right like you're you feel like you're adding value to the lives of people that's true actually i think that's the best part about it because you do something and then you see the impact right away because yeah. you're in the government you can actually make an impact at a bigger scale uh, which is not possible when you're in pakistan and you're working for a corporate ngo or even the bank so I think that's where uh, it's very fulfilling right. for anybody. Who's so that, that's your work there. And then I keep on looking at your pictures and I only recently discovered your video. So I'll come to that later. First, la, let's talk about your, your photography. Now you have, you have been one of the people who was out there on the social media from the very beginning. Like since I met you, I think you had that page that you have, NM Photography. Yes. So you have been out there from the very first day and hobbies are hard to maintain. I mean, it's easy to talk about having a hobby and a passion, but it really takes the time and the energy to maintain it over time. And you have been doing that, which is amazing and very inspiring for me. So would you like to tell a little about how you started doing that and how you kept on with it? Like, I, from where I come from, parents are always against such things because you're in, in your school and college and they want you to study, focus on your grades, but you want to do these things that they sometimes can't understand, especially Desi parents, and they try to try to try to try to control you. <laughs> so, did you face that uh, in your in any phase of your life too? So, how about you take the floor and tell me how it started and how it evolved? Okay, so I'll start from the first question: How was I inspired to get into it? And then I will talk about how I continue working on it and I give it consistent time from my life. Uh, so Pizan, when I started, I, had, uh, I did not have cameras or the gear to do photography, but I remember that when I was at LUMS, I was just uh, a very introverted and a very silent kind of a kid who wouldn't talk to anybody. And I think at that time, I chose photography and dramatics to be that source of expression for me. And I just went out and took pictures, which were really bad pictures on my phone. <laughs> and I used to be, the best part was that I was never conscious about whatever I was clicking on the phone. 
I was always very confident that, yeah, this is the best picture that I could have taken. <laughs> and I'm proud of it. So I think that really helped me out. And um, after that, when I started working, I realized that you know, photography is not going to go away from my life. I have to continue working on this. So I bought a lot of, you know, cameras and lenses and other stuff like that. And at that time, I did face a lot of opposition from my parents uh, because uh, they were like, you know, okay, okay, up till you were a student, it's all right. You were doing your undergrad, it was perfectly fine. You could continue whatever you were doing. But now you have to, you know, realize what you're doing because if you go to a wedding with a camera in your hand, you know how Desi parents are. They don't really... Uh, think that any profession apart from being an engineer or a doctor or a corporate employee is respectable. So they would think very low of it that, oh, she's carrying a camera around and she's taking pictures of random people in a wedding that is so annoying. <laughs> but somehow I, I always thought that that was, uh, that taking pictures was one thing where I could present my story, where I could, you know, just set up the context and be the person that I am instead of uh, getting scared or hiding my emotions in any way. So I just continued and although I faced a lot of opposition later on as well when I set up my own uh, small you know, venture uh, with the name and photography and I hired a couple of people who used to go and take pictures for me for events and everything like that. I faced a lot of opposition from my parents after that that you know we don't appreciate it. How can I do our daughter be, you know, out there? Um, but, and that has gotten me a lot of good projects. So I recently did a project last year for um, people from the Nescafe basement. They had uh, 24 musicians from all over Pakistan with uh, very unique instruments. So we had to cover them. And that guy gave me the liberty, Zulfi, he gave me the liberty to completely go out and ask them their stories and narrate them in a way which feels right to me. And I think that could have only happened if I had continued working on street photography since the time I started. So I think it really helped. And uh, I don't know if, if, it's, if it makes sense or not, but I don't find a reason why I can't give it consistent time. You know, a lot of people keep complaining about that. But for me, I would rather go out and take pictures instead of sitting and watching Netflix or doing things like that, because this gives me energy. I actually, once I go out and I find like a good place where I could take pictures, it gives me so much energy for that, that I feel like, okay, I'm done for the day for my <laughs> leisure. Now I can continue working. So yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to how you, what is your, what is your, um, I would say, what is your method of it? Like you capture landscapes, you capture people. I've seen you capturing architecture. Do you have a niche or you just go with the flow? Whatever you find attractive, you just go with it. So initially, I did not have a niche. I was uh, just going with the flow. I was just taking pictures randomly. But for the past two years, I've decided that I just want to cover stories. So I just go for even those places which have a story and which I could, you know, narrate through a picture. Only then I would go and, you know, spend time on taking pictures over there. And that especially dovetails with street photography as well. Because in street photography, these days I see a lot of young Pakistanis going out and taking pictures of old people. If you've seen that, yeah. old random portraits. I don't see the point of it. If there is no story behind it, if there is no purpose to it, then there is no point. So I try to focus on that now. Let it be portraits or weddings or whatever. I don't do weddings. Oh, really. by the way, your bridal shoots are amazing. I mean... Uh, everybody listening, I will put the links down there in the description somewhere. Do check her work out. It's, it's really good. Um, I, I, I don't remember. It was one of your pictures from, from the rooftop of Cuckoo's Den, perhaps. That was, that was one of my favorites. I had it on my screen for some time, too. So wonderful oh, work going on there. Um, now, picture is worth a thousand words, right? And that's, 
that's kind of what we what we feel from it as well. You remember that picture that ended the world war, that Vietnamese girl running naked in the war. So that's how powerful pictures can be. Uh, do you feel like pictures still in this age and with our scenario, the local scenario in Lahore or Pakistan, are making a difference in bringing social changes and making uh, a positive impact in the society? Um, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> so, in one way, they are bringing some sort of changes. So when I see these young photographers and, you know, they go to these, you've, you've seen those Facebook events of let's go and visit the inner wall city of Lahore. The photo walks, they call it, I guess. Photo walks, yes. So you see a lot of photo walks are happening. People are trying to get to know their culture. and But the point which is sort of sad is when I have been in a couple of photo walks and I don't attend photo walks anymore because they're so disappointing. These people would go there, these people would find a subject to just stop and take a lot of pictures. And for not, not like one moment, I would see them trying to understand what's going on. Like there is, these places are disgusting, to be honest. You go there, you don't even know where to walk, right? If you have been to I've the inner city. I, I would <laughs> know, but I've never streets been. Streets of uh, Lahore or uh, Rawal Pindi. If you go there, these are so narrow streets, but I just see that these people are using them for their own, you know, sense of creativity instead of trying to highlight that these are the issues that these people face. Like, probably that could have been a positive side to it. Apart from that, I don't see that it is bringing a lot of positive change in, in terms of our DC context. Interesting. Uh, perhaps the only side remaining is the journalism and... Uh, even there, I don't find, I mean, it's my personal view, I don't find Pakistani journalism to be exploiting the full potential out of photography. But again, I can be wrong. I can be wrong, totally wrong. The only way we're using it in a positive way, I think, is tourism. A lot of landscape photographers yeah, yeah. are there. They're That's using true. brilliant drone cameras and images, and yeah. they're producing very nice videos. If yeah. you've seen, there's a new video for Peshawar. I loved that video. It is, I think, made by Kareem, but it's, it's an excellent video. So I loved that. But then it just, I do feel sad that, okay, it's going to promote tourism a little bit, but then what about the sad side of the yeah. city? You know, you have to highlight that too. Great. Okay, let's, let's shift gears here and talk a little about your video project. Okay, I never knew that you were doing that. I saw one of your video months back that was about what makes you smile, I guess. That was the yes. title. And that was beautiful. But then I thought it was a one-time thing that you did and it was an experiment perhaps and you really don't want to continue with it. But you posted this video and I checked out your YouTube channel. You have quite some videos out there and they're really good. <laughs> I was just watching the one in Thailand and I was uh, in between somewhere where you were uh, having food. I I'm still have to watch the rest of it. But how is video making, Anam, different from photography? What extra value does video bring in your view? Fazan, I think video making is a takes you a notch higher when it comes to being a creative outlet. Photography is an excellent avenue of that as well, but video making is much more difficult. That's what I recently realized. Mm -hmm. And it's much more, uh, you need a lot of thought process going into it, much more than photography. And especially when I tried uh, making that Thailand vlog, and I'm actually right now working for uh, the vlog that I, when I went to Turkey, but it's so difficult to, <laughs> you know, make those sort of connections where you connect with people and then you tell them that, okay, this is what I did and why I did that and blah, blah, blah. But it, it's, it seems like an easy task. It did uh, to me as well, but it's, it's much more difficult. But I think if you hit it right, you can actually create a lot of value. You can actually connect a lot more. So yeah, I'm trying that. I, I think I'm going to continue with videography now more than photography because I enjoy it more. It's true. And you're already good, I guess. I mean, the way you, you put the, the transitions and the music and everything, it's, it's, 
it's pretty good. Not pro yet, but still, uh, I mean, hundred times better than me, for example. Uh, so I, I, for example, try to find uh, formats like this where I don't have to do much work. I can just put the video, put it up there and just get out of it uh, easy. But uh, you're right, it, it is a lot of hard work. And when I did a little, I created empathy for people. I never thought I would ever respect like Zadalit or Shamadri's people like that. I'm mean, like, <laughs> they are still working hard on that. It's not like, uh, it's so very yeah, hard. you're right. It's, it's difficult, but at the same time, you can create way more value. You can tell a story in more totality and that's true with more expressions. So yes. wonderful. And I'm, that's all I wanted to talk to you about. Any, any last message on what people out there are pursuing their hobbies or having a passion, but finding it hard to carry out or maintain? Do you have anything to say to them? Okay, the only thing that I'll say, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I think if your hobby gives you leisure, then automatically you'll make time for it. Automatically. It will happen. It will flow. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much again and have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, I hope I didn't... Uh, it's still time uh, till your Aftar, right? Yes, yes. Two okay, and a half okay, hours. Okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.